Howdy, folks, and welcome to Sweet 301. Hey, it is April. We're in Pittsburgh, PA. It was 80 last weekend. I went down to the Pitt-Penn State game, and it's snowing outside today. So I don't know what to make of that, but uh, I think I covered all the uh, here's what's, when's, why's, and now. It's April. We're in Pittsburgh. And uh, I'm Sandy Sanderson, and I'm joined with uh, Mitch Connor. And we're, we're glad you're tuning into our show. It's our monthly uh, broadcast where we uh, – Talk about all things happening in the world of Cole Club Sports. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more updates. And if you have any comments, uh, feel free to hit, hit us up in that chat box. Uh, uh, or call us. Yeah. You can call us at 412-321-8440, extension 107. And like Sandy said, you'll see the chat box beside the video. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, well, make sure you uh, stay with us till the end of the show. We've got a lot of information about upcoming events and for all of our leagues, you know. So it's not just uh, you know spring sport time. So let's see, where do we want to get started? Savannah. We can start softball, sure. All right, let's start with Savannah. Let's get her on the line. Which should we talk first? Spring training, softball. What do you know? Let's let's for? let's start with uh, softball. Softball, it is. You know, our our executive director says softball is the next topic, so mm. might as well stay on script part of the day. So well, get little, out of the way early. Little shout out to <laughs> wow. Kelsey. Savannah Harp, Savannah Aaron's. Excuse me, pardon me. Hi. <laughs> it's uh, good to hear your voice. How's it going there? Is it cold? It it was eight it was eighty last weekend and it is snowing right now. It's like blizzarding right now. When I say last weekend, I mean like thirty six hours ago it was eighty degrees. Right. right. That's I, ridiculous. We we went to bed last night with our windows and doors all open. We had to turn our AC on over the weekend. And it's yeah. now in the it's now in the low thirties and blizzard snow outside. So well, let's hope that, that doesn't happen next weekend. Uh, yes, let's hope let's hope so. So and it's supposed to this is supposed to be a twenty four hour thing, so it should be getting nice, at least in this part of the country. Um all right, well let's uh let's dive right into some softball, Savannah. Um what's going on in the world of club softball? Uh a lot. <laughs> Probably more than we actually have time for, but uh, we've had a ton of regional teams clinched. Almost every single one of them has clinched all but one actually. We're waiting on so the regional playoffs are all set. The final day of regular season for them is actually going to be uh, 420. That will be the absolute last day that uh, regional conference teams can play their conference games. And then May 4th is going to be the last day that non-regional conference games can be played. So we're coming up on those deadlines very quickly, and the postseason is upon us. Who uh, who are we we waiting on there? Who uh, who still hasn't clinched yet? We're waiting on the Great Lakes West. Um, it's looking like it may be Wisconsin, but who knows? Loyola may may uh, surprise us all. All right. And uh, I saw that the uh, the April top fifteen poll was recently released. How are things shaping up there? Um, well, Florida State fell out. Of the number one spot, they had the number one all season, um, but losing three to Florida probably that'll that'll bump you out. So um, the University of Illinois is now the projected number one. I wonder if people are projecting them to win the World Series this year. So I'm excited to see. It's been a while since they've been uh, back on top. You know, winning our first two World Series. Um, who else is looking strong going in the regionals? Going into regionals, we've got a ton of new teams that are making first-time postseason appearances, so I'm really pumped about that. Um, Kentucky, who's a new team this year, and UNC Charlotte, who is a new team this year. Those teams are both in the postseason. Rutgers, Ithaca, and Nebraska also making first-time uh, postseason appearances, so we're really excited about those teams getting a taste of what postseason is all about. That's awesome. That's terrific. Um, and have any teams clinched the World Series berth yet? Um, we are waiting on Air Force Sports to come in, and we're thinking that Air Force may have already clinched. Word on the street is they've already booked their hotel room, so don't know if they were expecting that or not, but I guess I guess they're ready for the World Series. They actually played pretty well last year at the World Series, so I'm interested to see how they're going to do. I know they didn't lose hardly any of their starters, so... 
All right, all right. And lastly, on the softball front, uh, what do we got in terms of new teams on board for next year? We've already signed five new teams for next year. Monmouth, High Point, Central Missouri, Eastern Michigan, and as of today, we just signed uh, University of New Hampshire. So uh, a ton of teams from different areas of the country. It's exciting because, you know, it fills holes that we've got in other areas, and we're really excited about it. Um, the renewal LPAs will be going out this week, so teams can keep an eye out for that. Go ahead and get that in before you leave for um, the summer break. It's really important to get that in as soon as possible. Outstanding. All right, well, softball's quickly, playoffs are quickly approaching, and it all sounds like you got uh, all your ducks in a row, so good job, Sabs. I think uh, Mitch has a couple questions for you about spring training. I do. I, I just want you to think about it for a second, Savannah. Just a month ago, only a month ago, it was only the second week into spring training. What do you think about that? I feel like it's been like three months. I, that's what I expected to hear. How, how did spring training go this year down in Plant City? It went tremendously. I mean, there was some rain, but when you are having 70 teams compete, you're going to have some issues because we were literally playing baseball and softball all day, almost every day. I don't think we got one day off, maybe one day the whole month. That's pretty exceptional. So the weather cooperated for you for the most part. For the most part. <laughs> Tell us what your favorite or most memorable part was. My most memorable part? Oh, man. I don't know. You got 45 seconds. Um, maybe, maybe team night? I love team night. Uh, we had team night at the press box and Hogan's this year. Always a good time to see the teams out mingling with each other and just, you know, having fun with the staff. And just, um, it's fun to see that. And obviously they're supporting the local businesses, so that's important as well. Right. How about how about favorite moment on the field or at the fields? Uh, my favorite moment would probably be, it wasn't actually on the field, it was at breakfast. And Kelsey will remember this, it is when Bob I. Bob Morgan and I met eyes for the first time we were down there. Um, <laughs> so it was a little oh, there it is. All right, Savs, we got to cut you off. Once again, great job with uh, all you're doing over there, and uh, we will be tuning in uh, for all the softball action that's going on in the upcoming weeks and uh, yep. those close uh, playoff races and, of course, uh, five regional tournaments this, uh, this year. It's uh, going to be good stuff, so keep signing those new teams. Talk to you soon. See you, Seth. All righty. Savannah Aarons giving us her lowdown on softball and spring training. Record-breaking spring training year, too. Um, most number of teams ever, both baseball and softball. Pretty awesome event. All right. On to some basketball. NCBBA, uh, we are less than 10 days away from the first ever NCBBA National Championship Tournament. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the start of... Uh, the future of the organization, and uh, uh, it's just flying by. It's coming so quick. It's exciting. Uh, it's nerve-wracking, you know, just like any putting on any event for the first time. Um, but, you know, we had nice meetings yes, over yesterday over the arena and met with the, the, the coach from the host school, uh, LaRoche College, and uh, I think he was pretty impressed with our attention to detail and putting on such an event. So uh, that's April 25th through the 27th. Uh, LaRoche College here in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, a lot of information on the NCBA website, NCBBBA, NCBBA basketball.org. Click on National Championships. There's hotel information and so forth. It's uh, you know Everything about the event is up there, and uh, it's going to be exciting, you know? Absolutely. Definitely putting a lot of work into it. Like like you mentioned with the LaRoche coach there, you could see how excited he was about this. He, he knows – the effort we're putting into it and what an event it's going to be for the team. So uh, if they're not as excited as, as you would expect them to be, they're going to be once they get here for sure. And, and LaRoche college is it's they don't have a club team. It's their varsity team. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just running their arena from them. And yeah. he, when we went and met with him yesterday, he was not familiar with club sports and I briefed him on it. And then we started talking about the details, the, the logistics of how we're going to operate our event. And he, uh, I think he was pretty shocked that uh, a club event would operate so, uh, let's say, professionally. Sure. Because um, I think there was a little bit of hint of jealousy there that, <laughs> hey, our NCAA events don't go the way you plan yours. So, uh, 
So that was good. It was uh, it was interesting. So, uh, but yeah, it's coming right around the corner. We got a bunch of staff on board to help us out and uh, make this first NCBA event uh, a huge success. Yeah, we'll we'll have the the brackets and the schedules out here as soon as we can. We're finalizing the final details. Yeah, the new the next polls come out tomorrow, correct? Mm-hmm. And then we'll be able to once the new poll top ten poll comes out tomorrow, we'll be able to finish the seating. Uh, and thus put together the opening day schedule and get the brackets released to everybody and so forth. But everybody plays Friday the 25th. Correct. So, um, you know, it's just a function of what time tip-off is for each each team. Yep. So uh, why don't we... And, and, and the, well, let's also, next that, that weekend is, our, is the NCBBA Basketball League meeting. It's an annual sure. meeting we're hosting. Uh, again, it's going to be held in conjunction with the national championship. Um, it's held uh, Sunday the 27th, Sunday morning at... 9 a.m.? 9 or 10, uh, 9 or one 10 of the two. A.m. Um, we can get you some inf- more information on that to confirm that. Maybe one of our astute colleagues behind the camera can look that up real quick for us. Um, but uh, the league meeting is real important. That's where we big uh, uh, decisions are made, you know, where teams create new rules and so forth with the league. Because you know, the, the way the league is run is based on the input by the team. So if a team set, stands up and says, hey, we should – Move the national championship up a week, back a week, up a month. Here's why. We talk about it. We go, you know, we lobby on it. Other teams chime in, and, and it gets voted upon. That's the importance of this meeting. You know, it might be a, a rule that says we want to put the shot clock back in the play. Someone proposes that, it gets lobbied on, voted upon. So, th- the league meeting is very important. So, not not just for the teams that are attending the national championship tournament. If you yeah. didn't make the tournament. Come for the meeting. Come for the whole event if you want. But definitely want to be a part of that meeting. Absolutely. That's where you get your voice heard. That's where you get to weigh in on the, the future structure of the organization, how things run. So so if you have questions about that meeting, you want to learn more about it, you give me a call, 412-321-8440, extension 105. Oh, we just got confirmation that meeting is at 10 a.m. on Sunday, April 27th. So, all right. And... Um, where do we want to go from here? Should we, we get uh, Coach on the phone? We could get him on the phone. Do we? Uh, we want to mention some of our guys that are that are already clinched and coming out to the event. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's I, do that. I think we should get them a little bit of press. So uh, first four we had clinched conference champions were uh, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, Spring Hill College, Bryant and Stratton, Cleveland. Now we've also finalized three at-large bids for Lewis University, University of Connecticut, and Syracuse University. So we have some fun matchups looking up. I, I think it'll be real exciting to I, – I hope that UConn and Syracuse get the opportunity to play each other. Uh, it'll be kind of that interconference rivalry. I think it'll it'll mean a lot to both teams getting to play each other at the event. So we'll see if that works out in the brackets. Two traditionally basketball-rich schools. Absolutely. Now – with the potential to meet up, you know, they already met up in conference play, and they got the potential to meet up in the national championship tournament, and um, you know, settle settle scores on the on the court. Could be fun. It'd be very exciting to who, see. Who do you think is going to be coming out on top? I am very excited to see what West or what Virginia Tech looks like. I think they're my favorite, having communicated with the team and the opportunity to see them play this fall. I think they're a very talented squad. Uh, I think they can do a lot and beat you a lot of different ways. So it'll be fun to see what they uh, match up like with the other teams we have coming to the event. I happen to be thinking Spring Hill is going to be the one that comes out on top. Um, they've played the most basketball out of mm-hmm. anyone in, in the NCBBA uh, with 33 games under their belt. They're going to be traveling the furthest to get here, coming all the way from uh, – what city are they Mobile, from? Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. So – you know they're putting a lot. They put a lot of work in on the court to get here. They're putting a lot of miles on on, uh, on the tires to get here. So uh, you know, I often think you know the team with the most adversity, the most uh, that goes through the most, often uh, has the thickest skin, the, the biggest shell on their back to to, to carry the load through a, a big tournament like this. So, could could not agree with you more. That's that's my pick. I'm picking Spring Hill College. They they want it real bad. So. But we'll, we will settle that on the court, and I'm, uh, you know, I mean, I'm also excited to see once we, the, the new polls come out, we can get that schedule released, uh, getting that out in the mix tomorrow, and see how the first round matches up. Absolutely. Sweet 301. Hello. 
Hello? Hey, is this uh, Coach JT? This is Hey, JT, this is Mitch and Sandy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing oh. great. Can't complain, can't complain. <laughs> What's the weather like down there in Mobile? Well, it is sunshiny oh. and probably about 65 today. Wow. We're very jealous up here because we're sitting in a blizzard. Yeah, I got you. Don't worry. We'll, we'll have that weather nice and, uh, <laughs> nice and dry. Well, I'm not going to say dry, but it'll be warmer for you when you guys come up in, a, in two weeks. But uh, congratulations, Coach. I don't think I've gotten to speak with you yet. Congratulations on uh, winning the Gulf Coast uh, Conference and uh, getting to come up here and play for the national title, for the big trophy you can see behind me. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. We're, we're just glad. We're glad to be a part of it. So, yeah, we're very excited, so. So how about you uh, walk us through your season here? We want to know strengths, weaknesses, how the team played. Give us a little recap on your team for, for those of us who aren't familiar. Okay. Well, we are uh, right now we're sitting at 26th and seven, which is pretty good. We, had, uh, we play a lot of JUCO teams that are local here in the state of Alabama and Mississippi and, and a lot of uh, JV teams. So we're very fortunate to have a bunch of teams like that. And uh, we do, all, you know, mainly our games are around around this area, so we get to play at home a lot, so that's good. And uh, it's just, you know, this year's been good for me. It's my first year being able to coach these guys, and, and uh, you know, just being able to coach it. As, you know, I've been a high school coach forever, and I'm just getting the opportunity to coach here at Springfield College. It's, it's been a blessing to me, and, and uh, just seeing how fast the game is, and and uh, just being a part of the, the whole college experience. And, being a part of this club team, you know, it's it's been it's been it's been fun. So, but uh, our strength, we are, you know, we're not very big. We're just, you know, a quick team that, that plays together, and and, uh, and and that's mainly just what our strengths are. Just being able to play together and, and use each other and, and create space for one another and, and and do those kind of things like that to help us help us score and, and uh, team defense. You know, we we we're pretty good on defense, so. So you can't, I can't complain when it comes to that kind of stuff. So being undersized, you know, it, you know, you don't really think about that when, when, when you can do those two things. So. so you're more about locking down on defense than being a, a run and gun type offense. Yeah, we we uh we believe in guard. So that's one of the things that we, we really try to take pride in is being able to guard you and and, uh, and just do things like that. So. Well, we uh we all saw at UConn in the. NCAA tournament, you know, take that philosophy to to hoist the trophy at the end. So that that very well could could be the key to success for you. Well, we hope so. We're, we're just glad to be in it and, and be able to have an opportunity to come that way and, and and play in that tournament. So so we're looking forward to it. It gives our guys a, a big trip at the end of the year, and and so I know they're excited about you know getting out of school and being able to come that way. So. Sure. So, so tell us this without giving away too many trade secrets. But uh, who are some of the names that had a pretty standout season on the team that we should be looking out for? Well, we have we have a few guys. We have a guy named Devon Hardrick. He is uh, he's one of our guys that that's been you know playing very well. He uh, he's one of those guys that really does everything for us. He you know, he can shoot it. He can put it on the floor. He you know he just he, you know he gets rebounds and he guards. And, I mean, he just, you know, he's just an overall athlete that, that he does pretty well. We have, uh, we have our point guard who is Pat McCree. He's from Popperville, Mississippi. He is, uh, he's a very good, he's a very good guard for us. He, uh, he takes care of the ball. You know, he's, he's one. Of, and I like him because he, you know, he don't really turn it over that much, and and uh, he just, you know, he just runs our offense and and uh, just a good floor general out there. So those two guys. Or you know they're getting it done right now. So that's great. What uh well before you take the court, what kind of a what do you tell the team to motivate them, or what kind of a, a mindset do you find the guys have before they uh, head out of the locker room and onto the court? Uh, just you know, it's, we have what we have. You know, we we have a saying before we go out that you know, and, and you know we truly believe in it that you you know you have all of eternity to celebrate your victories but you only have one life to win them in and uh that's that's really what our team philosophy is when it comes to motivation and we understand that 
you know, we only got one shot at this, and, uh, you know, we might as well give it everything we got and, and play together and play hard and play to win and, and do those kind of things. So, we hear Spring Hill College, that's, that's one of the things that, that we focus on as a club team is, you know, our purpose of being on the team and, and the whole, you know, what the whole goal is for, for each other and helping each other and, and just being the best that we can be so we can get close to winning or, or win, you know. That's, that's the only motivation we use each, each time we go out. That's a great attitude there. That's I like awesome. that. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. have to quote that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, write that down for us, please. <laughs> so we have about 12 seconds left to, to talk to you here before we get cut off. So give us some uh, closing thoughts. Uh, man, just excited. Uh, we're very excited to come to Pittsburgh. It'll be my first time in Pittsburgh. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, just being a part of the club tournament, you know, just being a part of the national tournament. I we really really appreciate you uh coming up here and thanks for taking the time to talk to us thanks coach we're gonna we're gonna make sure you and your boys have a great tournament up here and uh you can see how we run things first class it's gonna be a great time for all that's right all right we're looking forward to it thank you for having us on your show all right sounds good travel safe see see you soon all right, that's Coach John Teasley of Spring Hill College Gulf Coast Conference Champions. Probably going to be pretty high seed. I would be my guess when the polls come out tomorrow and the seeding gets released. Got to be. So in the meantime, um, again, basketball national championships 10 days away. Pittsburgh, PA, come on out. Check it out. Hey, if you're a club baseball guy in the area, club softball girl in the area, Swing on out. Come see what club basketball national championships look like. Car Fitness and Sports Center, LaRoche College, up here in North Pittsburgh. All right. Let's get that guy with the gray hair on, on the set. <laughs> What's his name again? Christian. Ah. Christian Smith, come on down. You're the next contestant on Sweet 301. Well, I will say there's a little more gray this time of year than, than normal. Why is that? Well, it's, it's April and we got a lot going on. Oh, okay. All right. right. Okay. I just didn't know. If Doesn't meant, stress like, cause gray hair? Your fall, your fall hair. Oh, no, no, so no. no, no that has nothing to do with that. No. Okay. Just stress. Okay. Stress I hear it you. Out. I hear you. <laughs> well, speaking of stress, you know, just to add a little more on you. Uh, big news this uh, week. Uh, if you're if you're out there in the world of National Club Baseball Association, you follow the NCBA. You probably heard Christian uh, received the promotion uh, la last week, I guess it was, and he's uh, been named the new VP of wow. Baseball Operations for the NCBA. Yeah. So that means, you know, beginning he's in a transition phase now, but beginning July 1st, he's going to be the man in charge of baseball. 24 hours a day, 365. We'll get you a cell phone number. We'll get you his address. Show up at his house. <laughs> you know, you know, if your baseballs are a day late arriving to your apartment, call Christian at I three love, in the morning. I love how you're giving them the, these ideas right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a walk um, as well. But yeah, I, I'm I'm extremely excited, and you know, I told everybody in the office, and told Sandy when he was, you know, letting me know that, you know, it. it I know it wasn't an easy decision for Sandy. I mean, he's. Um, laid the groundwork for this league and the reason we're here right now um 14 years ago he, he started the ncba and has taken it to where it is now and um i'm just extremely appreciative uh, that he's trusted me enough to you know put me in charge of of, of the league um so I'm, I'm really excited about it i can't wait to get started um you know i i you know, hope to leave a, a good mark, um, you know, once I, I begin this new position. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited. Something new and, and uh, just eager to get started. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But we are, I, I am I am looking currently, um, you know, I'm looking internally in our office, but I'm also looking externally. Anybody that is looking. I'm looking to fill the Division II um, director of operations position. Um, so if that is something that you know you're interested in, obviously it's it's going to require you most likely to move to Pittsburgh. Um, so can't still be in school. Um, so if that's something that that is of interest to you, please send me your resume. Uh, my email is on the website. Um, and just send that my way, and I'll definitely take a take a look at it. And 
not making any decision anytime soon because we are in the heart of a lot of things right now. Um, but yeah, please send me those those resumes this way, and um, I'll definitely take a look at them. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. For that you're promotion. Welcome. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> good, you did good. Hey, you know, for those of you back home, Christian's worked here, what? Eight, three, almost eight years. Three, three months less than me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, full-time. Full-time, yeah. Yeah, as a full-time employee. Yeah, I was a volunteer for mm-hmm. six. Yeah. Six. But, yes, yeah, so yeah. Christian's been around the block with us, so. I told him you never know where you're going to find good people. What is, I mean, it's crazy to see how far it's coming yeah. in the eight years I've been here. And Absolutely. I'm excited to see where uh, – what's up, Kels? Where it's going into the future, so. All right. That was your three-minute warning. Okay. Okay. Well, now let's move along, you know, beyond your, your new position. We're a month away from the D2 World Series. Paducah, Kentucky, year two of Paducah. Lay it out for us. Again, very excited. Second year in Paducah, uh, May 16th through the 20th. Um, you know, the, the eight teams that were there last year, they can attest to you. It's a beautiful stadium, beautiful playing surface. Um, they take great care of it. I know most of you probably have never heard of Paducah, but it's a, a fun town, and, and you're really going to enjoy it. Um, yeah, we're, we're less than a month away from first pitch. Um, as far as teams getting there, we do have – at this point, there might be more. Um, we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams have clinched playoff spots. Um, and again, that might be more. We just don't have the scores updated um, as of yet. But, excuse me, Penn State has clinched their spot, um, their typical powerhouse in Division II. Um, they're going back to the, the district playoff in District Two. Um, <clears throat> District 3, we have UNC Uni- USC Union, and William & Mary just clinched this past weekend. Um, in District 4, Akron and Cal of PA just clinched. Akron's a new first-year program. I, I, don't, I think they've been around for a while, but at least first-year program in our league. Um, I believe this is Cal of PA's first uh, trip to the postseason. Um, you were just talking to Coach JT at Spring Hill. Their club baseball team just clinched a spot in the District 7 tournament. Um, and then out in District 8, we got University of San Diego and the uh, Colorado uh, School of Mines, both making it to uh, Cedar City out in uh, Utah for their district playoffs. So there might be more as we come along. I'm trying to you know stay updated and get that word out on uh, the Facebook group and on the website, but um, you know stay tuned. All right, sounds good. Now let's talk about the future because we you grew the league a lot this year. What do we got on board for next year? New teams coming on board. Uh, I think right now, and sorry I'm not more prepared, um, but we do have six officially signed, sealed in the league for the 2014-15 season. <clears throat> I try. I don't. I've announced it on Facebook. They're somewhere on there. Um, but as far as potential new teams. Uh, I think really the sky's the limit this year. I'm getting tons of interest. I mean, emails usually coming in, um, not by the dozens, but you know, coming in at least an email a day about a team wanting to start a new program and trying to help them out. So, just really excited. I know last year I believe we added 34 new teams. Um, I'm hoping to get around 40 new teams this upcoming season. Um, so the NCBA is just on the up and up. Christian Smith added 34 new baseball teams last year to the NCBA. Our first year in existence, we only had 34 teams. So that's a good point. There's a, uh, and you wonder why he got promotion. Boom. All right. Thanks for showing up. Get hey, out of here. Thanks. Go away. I'm gonna grow good some job. more gray hair. Yeah. Go. go, go yeah. Go into your phone or something. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> All right. NCBA Division Two. Christian's on top of it. So good what stuff there. Sure, it's gonna be exciting again in Paducah. And uh, unfortunately, I will miss Paducah again um, because I'm going to be watching softball. So um, one of these years, I'm going to have to make it out to Paducah to see the D2 World Series. You really do need to because Christian's right. That ballpark is exceptional. What an atmosphere. I can't wait to to get to experience it for myself sometime Mm -hmm. soon. So why don't we move up to the big dogs? All right. Yes. (laughs) What do we got? Lay it on me. Am I on the bubble now? Yeah, pretty much. We got through it at I me. think I think we're on the clock already. So one month away, less than a month away from the postseason. 
how are our conferences looking? How about our? All right, we got three teams. Three teams in Division One have already clinched conference title, playoff berth. Texas Tech in the Gulf Coast, west or north. University of Central Florida, UCF, clinching the uh, South Atlantic South. UCLA, clinching the um, Southern Pacific West. Uh, those three teams have clinched so far. Teams that are looking hot. Both those teams are all, you know, currently Texas Tech, ranked number three in the country. UCF, number five. UCLA, number eight. New polls, new top 20 poll, rolling top 20 polls coming out to Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Teams that are looking hot this year, Michigan, off to a 10-0 conference start in the Great Lakes North. They got C Central uh, Central Michigan this weekend, three-game series. Central Michigan's number two in the conference. That's going to be a big one. Um, boom, 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 boom. Lone Star, D1, having a big year so far, 13-2 in conference. They got a big series with Texas State, their number two team at 11-4, coming up in, uh, I believe that's two weeks. A&M and Texas, two, two traditional powerhouses in the uh, NCBA Gulf Coast. A&M at 13-2, and two, Texas at 12-2. and two. They got a big series with each other coming up in a few weeks. Boom, Kentucky, 9-2 and two in conference. Got a big series coming up with Ohio University. Ohio, number two in their conference at 8-3 right now. Um, ECU is 11-1 in the Mid-Atlantic South. They got a big... Uh, number two team there is North Carolina at eight and one. They got a big series coming up against each other. Isn't that interesting? How the, the top two teams in the conference don't play until the end of the year. Good That's good Perfect. scheduling, absolutely. Delaware eight and one in the North Atlantic East. They got a big series coming up with Hofstra. Hofstra's new to Division One, moved up from D two. Hofstra's uh, uh, currently number two in that conference. Uh, who else is on there? Pitt just had a big weekend against Penn State. Took two of three. I think this is the first time ever that the number one ranked team in the country played the reigning national champion in a regular season game. Took two or three from Penn State, and then Penn State bounced back to keep their season alive with a 10-run rule of pit. Uh, so that was kind of kind of shocking there. But, uh, um, but again, Pitt, pitt did, did the work they needed to do to get the conference, uh, uh, the conference series under the belt for them, and they've got one more series against Syracuse uh, coming up ahead of them. Uh, Oregon's off to a 9-0 start. They still got series against... Five and three, uh, Central Oregon and and perennial powerhouse Western State. So Oregon, a program that's been very solid past through the years, has dipped a little bit the last couple. Looks like they've gotten back together. Uh, Utah State at ten and one, looking good out there. UCF again at fifteen and three wins the uh, South Atlantic South. Uh, Cal and UC Davis both at, you know neck and neck at eleven and one in the SOPAC North. Uh, UCLA again fourteen and one. Sweeps the SOPAC West. And here's my pay attention to this moment. Southern Pacific South. The race in the SOPAC South is ridiculous. Long Beach State's in the clubhouse at 13-5. and The regular season's done. Everybody else in the conference has at least five losses. Cal State Fullerton has the tiebreaker over Long Beach State. Uh, Arizona State, I believe, has the tiebreaker over Long Beach State. Now, those two have more games to play. Neither Cal State Fullerton or Arizona State at the moment are currently postseason eligible because they haven't played two non-conference games yet. We're late in the season. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're going to be able to fit those in. So even if they run the table the rest of the way, tie Long Beach State, they might not be postseason eligible. So it's going to you – know, and there's well, – Let's hope they're paying attention there's right four, now. You know, Long Beach State's in the, in the clubhouse at 13-5. and five. And there's four teams that are still in the running on the hunt. So we'll see what happens out there. That's good. That's the most interesting race, in my opinion, out there. So, so Kelsey says, peace to you. Peace be with you. It's Easter. Absolutely. That's exceptional. All right. What so, else you want to know about? I, I want to know your, uh, your favorites right now, World Series favorites. Give me three. I've been high on Texas A&M since the start of the season, and then I, I wavered on them a little bit, okay. and uh, I'm starting to regain some confidence in them. I was not high on Texas Tech to start the season, but they're growing on me quite a bit. ECU, they've been growing on me quite a bit lately um, until they got 10 run ruled this one this past weekend. They took two or three like Pitt did, won their conference series, did what they needed to do, but they got 10 run ruled, which uh, concerns me when you're looking at a potential national championship team. Same thing with Pitt. Pitt was sure. impressing me right until they got 10 run rolled. It is Penn State is the defending national champion. Um, so Texas, Texas A&M are two that uh, that I've got a close eye on. 
A sleeper that I find interesting is Wyoming, new to Division One, yeah. leading their conference right now with perennial powerhouse Colorado State, Northern Colorado, and Colorado solid up there. I mean, you're talking about four quality teams, and Wyoming's, you know, on top out there, not running away with it. But they are currently leading uh, on the board. Um, those are good favorites. Let's, those are good. Yeah. So we're, we're under a minute, right so now. let's so let's roll. You know, we've been having all kinds of weather weather challenges. So now that we're getting near the end, what is smart for teams to do to uh, to try to compete or work against that? Well, you got to play baseball. Uh, you know, you you got to find ways, whether it be, you know. Find a field in town. Just because the field you want to be on is rained out doesn't mean that every field in town is rained out. Mm. Um, go invest some money. Go get some turf dry. You know, it's Easter weekend. I'm sorry. Maybe you should reschedule this weekend. Um, play, look for Friday nights. Exactly. Friday play night, Friday Saturday. nights, Saturday, and play another opponent on Sunday. I mean, it, it's it's in your best interest to get the games played. Um, you know, there's some things in the rules about, you know, if you've got anybody, anybody that's within an hour of your campus that you've got to play, play them in the middle of the week. So, you know, get the games in when you can. Exactly. Now, uh, since since we're running the show here, why don't we take a couple extra minutes and talk a little bit about Tampa because there are plenty of people who are looking to go and haven't been there. What can you tell them about it, what they have to look forward to? Well, if you haven't been to, haven't been the Savannah Spring Training Showcase, Tampa's amazing. I mean, you were talking about the weather. The nightlife, the things to do. You know, one, one of the things with the world, the NCBA World Series, the D1 at least, there's a lot of downtime. You know, teams play. You especially if you win, you win, you get a day off. There's so much to do. You can go to the beach. You can go to Ybor City. You can go to Channel Side. There's the aquarium. You can cow drove up to Disney, which is like an hour and a half away, maybe. I mean, there's so much to do. We, as a staff, got hooked on some deep sea fishing um, last year. There's some great charters um, and great fishing. We went shark fishing one morning for like six at six hours um so there's so much to do in tampa the weather's great um it's gonna be un- it's always unbelievable competition i mean the ncba world series has been that way since day one so come you're gonna enjoy it bring your girlfriend bring her friends bring your parents bring your sister bring your brother bring your aunt and uncle make a vacation out of it we got great hotels great partners with local restaurants it's gonna be a blast it, it really is awesome experience um, what What is this long ball challenge that happens down there? Oh, the DeMarine Long Ball Challenge. It's our home run derby sponsored by DeMarine. They provide us with uh, some new released uh, DeMarine bats uh, to use. All participants use DeMarine in the home run derby. And uh, it's 16 team, 16 player field. We grab eight from each of the eight teams of the World Series. We p- hand select eight others from around the country in D1 or D2. Um, those that aren't a part of a World Series team. We give them a travel stipend courtesy of uh, Dee Marini to help them get down there, help with their travel costs. And it's a home run derby event. It's a blast. It's actually kind of one of the showcase events because you end up with eight teams and all the parents and all the players in the stadium at the same time. You get a packed house. You got yeah. the music going. You got the lights. You know, you got the, 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 the nice uh, Tampa air going. Um, it's just a blast. So it is if, fun. You, if you hit home runs out there. Apply for the home run derby prime. You know we want you in. So, what do they have to do to apply? Um, on the website, on Facebook, email me. I'll send you the form. I mean it's available on our website. If you go to clubbaseball.org, um, click on national championship or World Series, and then on the right hand side there's one that says De Marini application. Click on it. It'll download for you. Fill it out. Scan the email it back. Instructions are on the form. Get it in soon though, because we're going to begin you know looking at data on the the players that have applied already. And looking at uh, home run, you know, just because you apply doesn't mean you're going to get selected. You, we usually end up with, um, you know, maybe close to 100 applicants every year, and we got narrowed that down to eight. Um, so, uh, you know, get your stuff in early. You know, we track the stats. We look at big thing, home runs per plate appearance. We look at those kind of numbers. We do our homework. We check with the coaches. We check with the opponents. Hey, you know, this guy apparently hit two home runs against you. What do you think? They squeaked over the 100-foot fence. Or no, this guy hit 500 foot bombs. We take that into account when we make our selections. Oh, our overtime period's shot. Overtime. <laughs> Are we going to shoot out? <laughs> we should. All right, so that's it. Are we closing? I think so. Let's uh, let's mention the basketball league meeting one more time. 
because that's that's really important. National Championship and League Meeting, April 25th to the 27th is the Championship. League Meeting is the morning of the 27th, 10 a.m. If you are an existing team, a National Championship Tournament participant, or a just somebody who you know wants to start a team and they want to want to learn more about the league, send them out. Tell them to come to that meeting. All right. We'll see you on the 25th. Sounds good. So thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, lots of lots of busy weeks coming up here, but uh, I want to know from you, Sandy. What June first. June first. What he's most excited for? <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. I'm probably most excited. Once we get in the car, I get in the van and head to Georgia. Mm-hmm. All the planning's done. It's just execution. So when do I leave? May 14th, I think. I get in the car to head to Tampa or to Columbus, Georgia. That's what I look forward to. Once you get in the car, everything else is already in place. It's just ride the train. Mm -hmm. All right. What are you looking for most? (laughs) I was hoping you'd ask. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see the final two teams face off in the uh, Basketball National Championship Tournament on the uh, afternoon of the 27th. That'll be fun to uh, close out a a pretty exciting first season of basketball. Good things to come for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of hard work going into that. Yeah. So... Next episode, May 20th, that's a Tuesday, 3.01 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find a recording of this show online, www.ustream.tv backslash channel backslash suite 301. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for all your latest updates. We will see you next time. I have a gut feeling May 20th, that that show might come directly from the beach. That sounds all right. The same. Director, make that happen. We'll see you. We're out. Peace and blessings.